really let him put up this Raj Putt palace, are you? A lot of good judges consider the architecture of the Mughal Empire at least the equal of Renaissance Europe. Well, he certainly looks like a Mughal. Style's quite appropriate, actually. Andrew Baden made his fortune selling educational hardware to Asia. The main aim of the college is to bridge the academic divide between East and West. Well, maybe this will do for the Eastern end, but uh, for Oxford? Chinese pagodas in the parks next. Lyman. Right this moment, Oxford has 16 frozen professorships, 16 of the major academic chairs in the country unoccupied. Baden's gift means that we can unfreeze 10 of them. What do you want us to do? Throw the money in his face? Who's peddling this trash? Does not a word of truth in it, not one single word. I'm, I'm, malicious I'm sorry, scandalous. sir. I don't know where Mr. Baden is. I, I don't have his agenda. Your scummy, scummy, filthy, fascist will never yes, appear again. And as Certainly. Don't think you can hide my Goodbye. I'll sue you separately for personal damages. So you'll have to shoot you for your stinking slanderous foot. You'll limp in the gutter for the rest of your libelous life. Yes? Mr. Baden, sir, the Secretary of State wonders if you can spare a word. Knobhead! That's the word I can spare. Knobhead! Brunhildes are a terrible lot to put up with. Siegfried's betrayed her, lied to her, gone off with another girl. Of course, she knows he was drugged, really, but now it's too late. He's dead. Just like a man. <laughs> Still, she's ready to die for him. Throw herself on his funeral pyre. It's a grand passion, see? That's what you've got to go for, the grand passion. Go on. I'm sorry, lovey, but you sound like you're giving the weather forecast. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. Suppose she... She won't. Just do what I say, when I say it, and everything will be okay.
There are other Oxfords, at least five in Canada alone. There's one in New Zealand, one in Jamaica. As for America, there's hardly a state without one. Oxford, Alabama, Oxford, Idaho, Mississippi, Maryland, New York. What's splendid though these places may be, indeed in their own way, undoubtedly are, uh, places of beauty, perhaps, uh, perhaps, who knows, places of learning even. You can't say even. It's too rude. Nor who knows. Well, nobody does know. Nobody's the least idea what these places are like. The people who live in them know. And this one needs their dollars. Oh, Lord. Very well, then. Places of beauty, perhaps. Perhaps places of learning. There's no perhaps about it. It spoils the rhythm not to say perhaps. It's too Oxford, Harold. Oxford, England. But I am Oxford. The Chancellor of the University is the University. Places of much beauty, I'm sure. <laughs> Places of equal learning. Much better. And you didn't see anyone else? Oh, there's usually a man with a horrible bull terrier called Snap. But they weren't here this morning. But I'm... I was earlier than usual. We're off to Greece this afternoon. Excavation season. You don't happen to know the name of uh, Snap's owner, do you, just in case? We only say good morning. Or barely that. Bull terriers. Oh, he lives over there somewhere. Okay. But I didn't mean... I hope you don't think that I... Oh, I never think, madam. Sergeants aren't allowed to, not in the Thames Valley. Huh? Anyway, thanks very much. Uh, if you wouldn't mind waiting around till the Chief Inspector gets here. Molly? I'd like a dozen... Uh, no, no, two dozen of these roses, the long stem ones. They are fresh. Oh, yes, sir. Some poor sod got up at dawn to pick those. Look, real to you. Not much scent. Give them a chance, Gav. They've still got the sleep in their eyes, like me. Good God. What would they cost? They do say with roses. A dozen says it all. No. No, no, uh, two dozen. To be sent to Miss Gladys Probert at the concert hall. Ah, oh, the Welsh canary bird. Yes, they're to be there in good time for a concert this evening. They'll be sent in by then, won't they? They'll be singing their little hearts out, don't you worry. Give her a big trill. <laughs> now, the message is to the greatest diva of her time, with grateful thanks from uh, an admirer. Diva? How do you spell that? D-I-V-A. It's the Italian for goddess. Mm, very classy. She's not classy. She's classic. You Hold on! Arst! Down there in the bus station, was it? That's where all the tarts go. Trollop! They'll never make you a dame, Gladys. Not if you will talk dirty. Where were you? It's none of your business. Oh, yes, it is. You'd be nothing and no one if it weren't for me, Mary Probert. A bit of nutty slack, that's what. Scrubbing some coal miners back in Trabana, can thank your lucky stars you had the chance. Madam, please. Other hand, please, madam. There aren't any coal miners left in Trabanog. You want to look round next time you go home. Not a pit left in the Ronda. Shame, really. Everyone out of work. And you'll be next! God, all I ask is that you be at my concerts. Is that so much, my own sister? It was a class, not a concert. Concerts this evening. Look at the little slag. I sit all night like an alley cat. <laughs> While I'm slaving to put clothes on her back, she's stripping them off, running them in trousers. Who was he then? Hmm? Don't know his name. Don't even know his name, is that it? Hold on! Oh. Ah! Mrs. Bedon, madame. Adele. A sweetheart. Oh, my dear. You slept well? The pillows were hard enough? It was all perfect. Mm. Especially the air. So good for the voice, this country air. Mm. <laughs> and you, Mari? You were quite comfortable, I hope? 
Yes, thank you, Adele. Don't care what the room's like, do you, love? So long as there's a bed to lie back on. Loves her bed, Marie does. Mmm, I had a really nice lying. I think it's time Madame was dressed, Mrs. Bedon. Lord Cruz's benefaction is in one hour. His name's Grimshaw, sir. Neville Grimshaw. Oh, what makes you think that? Yes. On his driving license, all his credit cards. How do you know they weren't stolen, Lewis? Or planted on the body by some fiendishly cunning murderer? <laughs> Did the pathologist say when he died? Several hours ago. Several? Before midnight, he thought. The pathologist claimed to think. There, we've got to be kind to these poor chaps, haven't we, Lewis? They've got all their grisly tests to do. Just the one shot, was it? Yes, sir. There's a lady, sir. Ah, cherche la femme. No, it's the lady who found him. She's gone on holiday, wants to get off home. Well, let her go, Lewis, let her go. Well, you've asked her all the relevant questions, I presume. You're not holding her on suspicion. No, sir. Then why should I add to the poor woman's stress and strain by asking the same questions? Send her on away. Wish her a happy holiday from me. I suppose it has to be murder. It couldn't be suicide. Uh, no, sir. Look, no powder burns. Look. Pity. <clears throat> Such a beautiful morning. Any sign of the gun? No, sir. All right. Better drag the river. Right, sir. It would be nice to be able to enjoy the ISIS now and then, wouldn't it, instead of always having to fish bodies out of it? Are you feeling job stress, sir? What? I was reading in the paper the other day. Allowing the pages of the sun to pass before your eyes does not amount to reading this. Police sergeant, it said. Very high-risk occupation. Long hours, stress and that. What about the distress you cause chief inspectors? Not enough time for families and friends. Recreation, hobbies. Well, then you must make time, Lewis. Not for hobbies, but, but for art, for nature. Last night, last night, I experienced Oh, it's, it's very hard to put into words, really. It... <laughs> oh, for God's sake, Lewis. Is that all you can think of? You're supposed to be a married man. Uh-huh. You didn't go off beer just because the pubs were open no, all you hours, did you? everything down to such a mundane level. You know, the world is full of, of such possibilities. Where are we going? Back to your mundane world. People called Grimshaw. Life without art or imagination. Be flat instead of be natural, which you always say. She goes wrong is over here. I think it's because she breathes here. No. Simon, I'm sorry. There isn't going to be room for you in the helicopter after all. Arabella Bedon's got to go back to her college and clear her room. So there's only one free seat. And Madame wants Pierre. Pierre? You're to join Madame at the concert hall at five o'clock. Tammy's leaving at 4.30. You can travel with her. I am not traveling with Tammy. I am not a servant. Those are Madame's instructions. Where is Madame? last night. I hate opera. Well, that's not what you said when you wanted those tickets for Paparossi. 
You don't have to believe everything I say. I don't believe anything you say. You believe the paychecks, don't you? No one really likes opera. People only go for the intervals. Not Adele and Arabella. Do you know how much Adele's passion for the voice of Gladys Probert cost me last year? Nothing. You wrote it off to public relations. What's this supposed to be? Your doctor's robes. Oh. Couldn't you give me something with a bit more pizzazz? Like what Gladys has. It's music. You asked for law, if you remember, because you hold law in such high respect. Don't you get sassy with me, you fat cow. There are plenty more where you came from. This came while you were titivating. Get me that knobhead! Which particular knobhead, Mr. Baden? The head knob! Williams. Found him, sir. The murderer? Already? No. I mean, we found where Grimshaw was staying. And he is Grimshaw. Shh. There. Damn. Seven seconds off the record. If you hadn't come barging in like that, the person from Porlock, that's who you are. No, sir. Newcastle. So, who is Grimshaw? Some sort of journalist, looks like. No last thing. <laughs> Been staying in the Randolph the last three nights. Went out yesterday evening. Hasn't been seen since. Bags and everything still in the room. Good. Well done. Now, just tell me who killed him. We can both go home. Someone with a gun. Anything interesting in his things? I thought you'd want to go through them yourself, sir. Oh, well, can't you do that? I'm not in the mood. I feel too, too... I'm still up from last night. I'm not sure I don't prefer you down. Down. I'm never down, Lewis. I'm the cheeriest chief inspector in the division. Everyone knows that. Oh. <laughs> Come on now. Off to the Randolph. At least they serve a decent pint.
Hobbs' magic carpet. I'm surprised he hasn't beamed himself here by satellite. Freelance. He was a freelance. None would pay him to write lies full time, so he wrote them on spec instead. Oh, yes, of course. He was here to write about Andrew Baden. As though anyone ever wrote about anyone else in Oxford. That place he wants to build. It's like an Indian restaurant. I suppose you think the Taj Mahal is a restaurant. Yes, sir. Down the till. The Taj Mahal, Lewis. <laughs> All right. All right. What does Grimshaw say about Bain? He calls him a demigod of third world education. No one ever says a bad word about this secular saint. And, of course, it's difficult to criticise anyone who's been in a Nazi concentration camp. Anyone can be snide. What have you got? Diary, dress book, not much else. How will you take those? I'll bring these. Back to the officer. No, to the Sheldonian Theatre, Lewis, where Andrew Baden is about to graduate from demigod to honorary doctor of law at the University of Oxford. Oxford will ever enter the real world? Oh, God, no, I hope not. Ready, Stephen? Come in now. That's Hermes. That's Gladys Probert. Which one's Andrew Baden? Please, let me in here. I'm a medical man. Situation under control, sir. The area's been. Please, 
please, will you just stand back? There's nothing to see. Please, just stand back. But I work for her, don't you understand? She needs me. I'm sorry, sir. No one's allowed to leave the building. <sighs> but if madam just... There's a gunman out there, sir. Now, please, just sit down. came from there. No, it was there, I'm sure. No, it was one of those windows, look. Well, of course, there were bells. It wasn't possible to be absolutely Why could certain. it have come from there? No, no, no. No, it came from that side. You saw the bullet wound. Why would anyone? Her. Perhaps it was meant for me. No, my enemies wouldn't miss. She's famous. That's all you have to be these days. But this isn't America. Guns aren't that easy to... And... and shh, shh. Not clear, sir. Not clear. All right. Thank you, Professor Cartwright and Mr. Baden. If you'd like to make your formal statements to one of the officers. Oh, both the college and the, the library heavily manned, sir. All safe. Hope to God it is. If there's still some madman running about. Morse! What the hell do you think you're doing here? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, order, please. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, will anyone who was inside the building at the time of the shooting and saw nothing, please leave by that door and give your name to the constable as you go. Anyone who was outside or saw anything, Please remain here. I repeat, anyone who was outside or saw anything, please remain here. Thank you. Oh, Lord, there will be hours. Did you see anything? I think I heard the shot. Well, go and tell them then. And be quick. I want my lunch. This is all very unsatisfactory. Who's in charge here? The police, Chancellor. Oh. Well, can't you do something, Davis? Well, no, I, I don't think I can, sir. Go on, go on. What's the point of high office if you can't use your influence? Ask one of those chaps there about lunch. Excuse me, officer. I'm the vice chancellor. Would it be possible to speak to whoever's in charge? Not at the moment, sir. No. Sorry. You can't. You're already working on another case. Sir, I was here when it happened. I know who Gladys Probert is. I know her work. I I've already started questioning but, witnesses. Well, you know right to, not without authority. Oh, for God's sake. You're supposed to be investigating the murder of Neville Grimshaw. There may well be a connection. Oh. Two shootings in one day. How often does that happen in Oxford? You need someone who knows the ins and outs of the university. You've got the entire academic establishment in there, from the Chancellor on down. Oh, my God. Lord Inksy. Bella! Aren't you watching your dad being doctored? Dad gets so many of these things. Anyway, I've got to go and uh, clear up my room. Damn conference. Mm, I know. But the college has got to make money somehow. Want me to help you pack? Then we can go on the river. I still can't get over last night. Wasn't she fabulous? Oh, I've decided I'm going to be an impresario. Go around the world listening to great singers, then bringing them to England and putting on huge concerts in the Albert Hall. Why not Wembley Stadium? <laughs> First, it was definitely not a random shot. Oh, why? The gunman only fired once. We all agree on that, don't we, Lewis? Yes, sir. Only one shot, definitely. 
So if it had been a psychopath with an automatic weapon, well, there wouldn't be a senior member of the university left alive. So the second thing we know is whoever it was was interested in her. Not the university bigwigs or the other honorary doctors. But why? And why here? Well, that's what we've got to find out, sir. This is an Oxford crime. It needs an Oxford man to solve it. All right, Lord. Thank you, sir. What do you want, roadblocks? Well, what's the use? He'll have got away by now, and even if he hasn't, we don't know who we're looking for. Well, whatever you do want. Only with all these big wigs about, the publicity's gonna be massive. For God's sake, don't mess it up, will you? Hmm? What's missing? Just my jewellery, I think. How awful. Was it very expensive? No, no, nothing valuable. I don't, don't keep anything valuable here. Oh, but my my pretty bead necklace, the, the one I got in Bali. You were wearing it last night. Oh, was I? Oh, yes. Thank God for that. It must be at home, then. Well, what about cash? It's what to keep my money in my purse. Daddy's rule number one. God, it's so... It's so disgusting. Someone... Someone rummaging through my... Oof, I'm going to get all this washed and give it to Oxfam. Well, it's... it's dirty. Everything that he touched. He? Only a man would make a mess like this. What did he have to do this for? Muddling up all my notes. For God's sake. Gladstone and Disraeli in with Rousseau and Karl Marx. Oh, they weren't like that, any of them. Oh, and here's your own family story. The rise of the gentry. Look, all mixed up with the poor law. Well, we're not gentry, thank God. Much too rich for that. Did you, did you put that drawer back? What? The bottom one. No, it was like that. Oh, God, no. Excuse me, Inspector Morse? No, Chief Inspector. Isn't it? I'm the Vice Chancellor, Davis, Watkin Davis. Yes, sir. Dreadful, um, business. Dreadful. Might I have a quick, um. Yes, sir, of course. Uh, let me see if anyone's come up with anything in there. Oh, is she? Will she, um. I don't know, sir. I imagine they're operating to remove the bullet now. You knew her, sir, personally? Oh, God, yes. Gladys and I, we went to the same chapel. Our fathers worked at the same pit. Was it your idea to give her the honorary degree? Well, all Oxford knows about going to play this Tom Luddy Jones, so when I became Vice-Chancellor, my word counts for something on matters like that. I should hope so. <laughs> you don't know university politics and anyone Welsh in England. Why do you think Gladys has never been made a dame, though she's the best bloody Brunilda since Kirsten and Flagstadt? Well, better, I'd say. Of course, I've only heard Flagstadt on disc, but... Uh... Was there any opposition to her? <laughs> only the professor of music, Pollock. He was very against it. Why? He's one of these chaps who thinks banging a saucepan on the lid of a piano is better than opening it up and using your fingers. Yes, but even a man like that, I mean, he wouldn't. Oh, I couldn't say. His favourite piece of music is that three minutes and whatever seconds it is of silence. I know that. Is he here? Refused to attend. Said I'd overridden his authority. Wouldn't even come to the lunch. About the lunch, Inspector. What lunch? Simon was coming. That's Madam's voice coach. But there wasn't enough room on the um, helicopter, you see. So, Madam preferred to have me. You're the uh, hairdresser, is that right? I'm Madam's stylist. People expect a star to look like a star. That's why Madam takes me everywhere, you see. She trusts me completely. Did anyone come with you? Mari, yes, Madam's sister. I don't know where she's got to. 
See, we were coming along here, and we stopped by this bookstore, and she said she wanted to go and get something. So I said I'd go along ahead and uh, save her a seat. She gave me this, see, to put on it. But um, she never turned up. Miss Probert's been staying with you, sir. Well, I should have liked her to, of course. She goes around with such a great gang of people. Actually, she's staying with the Badens, the Charter of Woodville. Adele Baden, you know. She never misses one of Clarissa's concerts, follows her around the world. A groupie, I think they call her. And, of course, as he was getting a degree, too. There was some opposition to him, I believe. Oh, no, not to him personally, no. More to the plans for his college. Actually, between you and me, Inspector, some of us are rather hoping the planning authorities will come to our rescue. Not that that's anything to talk about now, of course. Andrew, give me a statement. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'll just go and give them mine, and then I'll join you at All Souls. What? For lunch? The priorities of the academic world, Inspector. You've got a lot of guests, I imagine, sir. I didn't realize that Miss Probert is one of yours. Oh, my wife and Gladys. She's got quite an entourage, I understand. Repetiteur, voice coach, secretary, dresser, coiffeur. She doesn't visit, she goes on progress like a medieval monarch. She was going to give a concert here tonight, you? Yes, sir, I was going. Uh, any further help I well, can there give There is you? one thing, sir. There's no connection, as far as I know, but, um, Do you know a journalist called Grimshaw? Neville Grimshaw, freelance? I don't think so. He was writing a piece about you. I wondered if he'd been to see you. Um, last day or two it would have been. I'm sure not, but I see so many reporters. Why? He's... He died, sir. Oh. Well... Ask my secretary, she keeps my diary, Helen Buscott. Thank you, sir. I shall be going over to Charlton Woodville this afternoon. Question Miss Probert's people. My staff will give you every assistance. I've been with her for over a year now, and I must tell you, it's been fantastic. That's the man that went to the ambulance with Madam. Oh no. Oh no. Madam. Madam. Excuse me, sir. How is she, sir? Holding her own, just about. Are you the policeman in charge? Yes, sir. What a pity they had to call you in. The proctors could have handled it perfectly well. I mean, it was much better in the old days when all crimes committed on university property were dealt with by the proctors. Knew what they were doing. Still, since you are here, can't you get a move on? I mean, all these questions seem to be taking an inordinate amount of time. Police work is slow, sir. Has to be. Did you hear the shot yourself? No, no, no. Far too deaf. I told that constable, listen, I'm giving the most important speech at the Encenia Tea this afternoon. My farewell to Oxford. Here we are. I hope you're not going to try to cancel it. Do you think anyone will want to attend a tea party after this, sir? Well, why not? She's not dead, is she? No. Well, there you are, then. I mean, of course, if she'd been dead. But we mustn't give in. Business as usual, that's how we won the war. The Encenia tea must definitely take place. How far is it from here to Lonsdale College? A quarter of a mile. And any number of places en route where you could get close to Gladys Probert. So why choose a library full of people instead? Perhaps it came from Hartford College, then. Why a college with only one way in and out? Where did you think the shot came from? Well, it's like a sound box here, all this stone. It always bounces every which way. Let's have a look. Walk beside me. I'm Gladys Pro, but you're Andrew Bain. We get to here, 
But once we've turned, the people behind would have hidden me from Hartford, wouldn't they? Looks like it, yeah. Well, then it must be the library. But why choose a place notorious for silence to fire a shot? Come on. How many people were in here at the time? Not more than half a dozen. Exams are over, you see. Most undergraduates have gone down. And this end is mostly used by research students anyway. Where were they sitting? Well, scattered about. But at the window, mostly. Shh. Watching the procession. I was, anyway. But it's only once a year. So, if anyone had fired a gun... Oh, we'd have heard. Is it possible to get on the roof? Not without a special key. And it hasn't been issued today. I've checked. That door there, uh, there are stairs, aren't there? That's right, yes. Were you...? Mm, yes. Is this usually open? Yes. Anyone in here would have a pretty good chance of finding themselves alone, especially with the term over and the procession going on outside. Probably, yes. Right. Thanks. If I might just have a word with my colleague, you'll be in there for a while yet? Of course. Inspector. It's lunchtime, and people are getting very hungry. Send out the sandwiches. This is a library. Eating is strictly forbidden. If you were a graduate of the university, I should have thought you'd have known that. Well, then you'll just have to wait until the officer in charge says you can go out. I'm famished myself. You don't suspect her, do you? Why not? Well, she was looking through the window, she said. She didn't say which window. And who would know about this room? The time of the procession, the route, would you? Well, no, sir, but... But you're not a university man, but a graduate, an undergraduate, even someone who'd failed his exams. A regular reader, any librarian. Couldn't miss from here, could he? There's no question she was the target. Get this place cordoned off, get forensic in, and I want everyone who was in this building this morning questioned again, especially the staff. And I want the whole library search from top to bottom, too. Why her? What harm does a beautiful voice do to anyone? Or is it because it's so beautiful? Do some people really hate art that much? I wouldn't know. You don't like art, do you? I don't know anything about it. But you suspect it. You think it's up to no good, something you wouldn't like if you did know it. No, I don't. You're like Plato, Lewis. He wouldn't allow poets in his Republic. Dangerous people have ideas. Worse, they have dreams. I've got nothing against dreams. What we're looking for here is the sort of person that slashes pictures takes a hammer to Michelangelo's statues and a flamethrower to books. Someone who hates art and ideas so much that he wants to destroy them. A fascist. I don't want to destroy art. I just don't like it when people try and force it down my throat. I'm not accusing you. You have to care to want to kill. So who cared most about Gladys Probert? Is she really so very wonderful? I'm getting so deaf, I can't tell. She's terrific in Wagner. Oh, good. I like Wagner. Why? You can have dinner between the acts. Oh, yes? Uh, discuss his ideas over a bottle of port? <laughs> yeah, well, why not? <laughs> They're repellent. Oh, of course. But the point about great art is that it rises above the mundanities. And you think the concentration camps were mundane? Very, I imagine. What is it? 
I don't think this is quite the time or place to discuss such matters. It is quite totally absurd to blame Wagner for the concentration camps. Well, he was Hitler's favorite composer. Well, my favorite composer is Cole Porter. What does that tell you? You're a closet gay. What did you say? Lord Hinksy, Lyman Stansky has raised over $50 million towards the Oxford Appeal in America. Well, I can't understand what that's Ten million of which are going to build a center for Jewish historical studies. And I think we'd better sign you up for the first semester, old oh boy. Oh, look. Here comes an authority on concentration camps. Let's ask him how oh, mundane his experience was. Sergeant. This is Probert's hairstylist, sir. Well, well, there's still no sign of Mari. Her sister's. I don't know where she's got to, uh, but I found this in a shopping bag. It's got Madame's name on it, but it's in Welsh. For God's sake. Excuse me, sir. We have something here written in Welsh. Could you translate it for me? Yes, of course. Not very literary Welsh, I'm afraid. Never mind about that. Just tell me what it says. It says, my ddrwg iawn geni. I'm very sorry. Roedd am rhaid i fi wneud a hyn wneus. Well, that's more or less it. I had to do it. Roedd a dewis rhyngddo ti a fi. It was me. Or you, Hoyle Vow, goodbye. Who wrote this? and months. I can keep a secret from Daddy. Oh. Why can't Freddie and your father get on? You and I do. And Paraguay, of all places. But listen, Marie. Look, someone wants to find Fred very badly. But someone who knew that he'd been in touch with me, or, or at least guess. Hmm. It was this journalist, or at least I think it was. He, he, he kept on and on asking me about Fred. What did you say? Oh, that Fred has always done his own thing and that Dad has always supported us in our individual life choices. You know, the usual spiel. But why would a journalist want to take your jewel? What else did this man ask you about? My life choice. <laughs> I told him I was going to run the Royal Opera House. Mum, do you think I should tell the police? I don't know. No. Your father would get to hear. Oh, it's... A number of Welsh sopranos able to tackle the heavy Bagnerian roles. Anne Evans, Gwyneth Jones, and of course, Gladys Probert herself. Anthony Peaty, do you think there's any special Hi. reason for this? Thanks very much. Been famously good singers, yeah. of course, since the early Middle Ages. But we probably have to attribute... All ports warning gone out on Mari Probert. ...and Isolde's Shh. the huge international success of Welsh National Opera in Cardiff. Where Gladys Probert has sung many times, of course. Where would you place her in relation to other Brunhilde's past We've got and present? Time to That's stop a for a bite, sir. Eh? And, of course, she's just coming to the peak of her powers, which is what makes this shooting particularly tragic. But we'd certainly have to place her up there. there is. Among Find the out where the professor of like music that. is. Pollock, he's called. Uh, what made you pick on uh, mogul architecture, Dr. Bain? He's not a doctor. Not yet. We haven't had the ceremony. No, surely we can waive the point on a technicality. No, no, no. We must follow the correct procedure. Otherwise, we'd have every ragtag and bobtail going around calling themselves a doctor. Have you ever been to India, Dr. Stansky? Yes. Stansky is a doctor, Chancellor, a medical one. Yes, uh, I've been to India. Do you ever see finer architecture than those Rajput palaces? Well, it's very fine there, but uh, here in Britain, uh, at Oxford? Gasp. Quite out of place. Oh, but don't take any notice of me. I'm just an old fogey, I know. All right, Lord Hinksy. Tell me, which is the most memorable college in Oxford, the one that people can always name? I like Lonsdale. Went up in 1919, you know. Just missed the Great War by a whisker. Thank God, or I'd never have got to be foreign secretary. Why not, sir? Would have been dead. 
Stansky. Most memorable. Well, uh, well, I don't know. Uh, Maudlin, maybe, because of the tower, or Christchurch, Tom Quad. Keeble. Keeble College, and do you know why? It's the ugliest. Because it's the most flamboyant. That's why people remember it. It's the most flamboyant now, but when people see my college... Mm. Thank God I shall be dead by then. She hasn't taken her wash things. She must have left in a hurry. How long were you all planning to stay here? Four days. A lot of dresses for four days, surely, for Mari. But Madame must be in Zurich for rehearsals on Tuesday morning. What's the thing? I have just... Uh... Zurich is devastated, naturally. Of course. Uh, after Zurich, it was Palermo, then Sydney. Madame was not coming home till the New Year. Where is home, exactly? Uh, Madame has a villa in Antibes. There is also a house in Guadeloupe, an apartment in New York, a flat in London. But for an artist like Madame, the only true home is the stage. People think it is easy, the life of a great singer. But there are many sacrifices. She was married once, I think. Mr. Pappenheim was a man of conventional opinion. He did not understand that for Madame, her art must always be more important than his life. But the parting was amicable. He gave her a very generous settlement, as I recall, a million and a quarter dollars. Has there been no one in Madame's life since? I'm sorry, I, I have to ask these things, Mr. Plessy. After the failure of her marriage, Madame decided no permanent relationship would be possible. What about impermanent? Madame is a woman. Is there anyone now, anyone in the recent past? Not that I am aware of. And what about Mari? I believe she has had various relationships. None has been more than transitory. Is there anyone special in transit with her now? No. Then who paid for all this? All Marie's bills are sent to Madame. I pay them for her. What does Marie do in return? Madame is devoted to her sister. She takes her everywhere, pays for everything, just because she's her sister? Of course. Grimshaw. Grimshaw. I certainly don't remember anyone of that name. He was writing an article. Many people write articles about Mr. Baden. He encourages it fiercely. Some people don't like him as much as others, though, do they? Especially not in Oxford, with this uh, new college of his. Well, he doesn't care. All publicity is good publicity. Is Mr Grimshaw's piece friendly or hostile? Oh, well, Chief Inspector said it seemed a bit grudging, but... He probably wrote for one of the highbrow papers, then. They do so hate someone to be successful. Well, he certainly never made an appointment. He couldn't have interviewed Mr Baden casually. It's very unlikely. Mr. Baden is extremely busy. That's why we keep a record of all calls, letters, everything. No, I think you'll find it's a scissors and paste job. He'll just have got out the files, read what everyone else has written, and made a rehash, getting it all wrong in the process. Mm. We've got people like that in file. How long have you been with her? Nearly a year. And, um... People do say that she can be quite uh, temperamental. She's impossible. We all get fired three or four times a day. And what about Mari? Does she get fired too? Twice as often. She gets things thrown at her too. Really? Mine's madam of her childhood, I guess. It was pretty rough, you know. She was eldest of 14. How the mother survived. Madame visits her pretty regularly. Well, 
Mrs. Probert's so old. And when Madame took Mari away from home to live with her, there was some kind of feeling, you know? But Madame's always talking about her family and her childhood, uh, the friendliness and warmth of the terrace streets, Zion Chapel, where she sang. Well, what else can you say, you know? I hated the choir. I'm glad they turned that dreary, damp barn into a garage. Wales was horrible. My father abused me. No, he didn't. I was just... But, but I, I thought she loved the place. And she's always going and giving concerts in Pontypris. Oh, sure. What would people say if she didn't? But she doesn't stay. What Madame says in private is she's sorry that she put the bathroom in her mother's house. They don't even use it to put the coal in, she says. Now they've got gas and electricity. She thinks her brothers use it to make beer. Just because that bitch cat is going to come in a windpipe. That's Kate from Williams. Who's our contact in Asuncion? Their time. Get him now. Would you say Madame Probert has any real enemies, Mr. Vavasor? My dear, she's a singer. No singer speaks of another without spitting. But they don't actually shoot each other, surely? They do on stage. Of course, these days there are some singers that should be shot. <laughs> so is, is there anybody who hates Miss... Uh, Madame Probert enough to...? Well, there's Sylvana Negresco. She'd stoop at nothing. How do you spell that? Oh, don't bother. She's a ghastly poseuse with no voice who frumps about in hideous frocks, missing her top notes by miles. Anyway, she's in Rio doing the Flying Dutchman, and believe me, with her in pursuit, no wonder he's flying. <laughs> hmm. Lovely handwriting, Sergeant. So, uh, how long have, have you worked as Madame Probert's voice coach, Mr. Vavasor? Ten years, ten fabulous years. Because uh, you may not know this, but most murders are committed by somebody very close to the victim, a member of the family often. But we're her family. Gentile Bellocchio, me, Brigitte, why, even that ghastly, poncing, froth-head Pierre is like the naughty younger brother. You can't imagine any of us. Oh, no, 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 sir. No, you were all here, uh, apart from Pierre, who was at the theatre. But what about Mari? She's a member of the family, and she's disappeared. And she left a strange sort of note saying she was sorry. Mari often nips off for a few days. You know, we all of us have to have some life of our own from time to time, or we'd all go mad. So where does she go? Well, with who, sir? Whoever. Permanent liaisons may be all very well in ordinary life, Sergeant. And I'm sure you're very happily married yourself. Yes, sir. I am. But we're none of us anywhere long enough for more than a little light refreshment. Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Or, sir, as the case may be, you're not free this evening, are you? Thank you, sir. I'm investigating an attempted murder. Well, huffy puffy, you come here in your... Horrible shiny suit trying to rig up dirt about a woman we'd all give our lives for. Well, you needn't think you'll get any of that out of me. You won't get anything out of me, neither. Sir. They were asking about a journalist, someone called Grimshaw. Apparently, he was writing about you. Only now he's dead. Is he? Andrew 
Mr. Baden's office. Oh, Mr. Wertheim, I'll put you through. Get me the file on Latin American outlets. At once. Wertheim, got anyone in VRE car? Right. I want him to find an Englishman traveling in the name of Henderson. Been in Paraguay three months. Find out if he's had any visitors, especially from England, especially called Grimshaw. Grimshaw. Yes. Any means, any means at all. I do not know, nor do I wish to know. What, that is not important. What is important is art, Madame's art. Yes, of course. I have been with Madame 14 years. Very early on, I learned that if I wished to stay with Madame, I had to pay no attention to the stupidity around her. I did wish to stay, so What I... sort of stupidity? She seems to change her entourage quite often, apart from you and Mr. Vavasseur and Miss Duplessis. Everyone seems to have changed last year. They come, they go. Did something happen then? Was it in any way to do with her sister? For God's sake, Mr. Balokia! I do not believe in God. What happened last year? It's beginning to look as though Mari Probert may have had something to do with the shooting of her sister. If you know anything about it, you must tell me. I believe there was some trouble over an ignorant young man. I cannot understand why Madame should be interested in someone who knows nothing about music. What happened? I don't know. What was his name? I don't remember. Quavers, semi-quavers, those I remember. A false piece of phrasing, I remember that perfectly. The rest, piffle puffle. <laughs> I am not a great artist, but I have a talent to be useful to someone who is. That is my satisfaction in life. What the great artist does when she is not being an artist, that to me is... Who might remember this young man? Madame and Marie, when they discuss such matters, they speak in Welsh. But Adel Bedon, I think perhaps Adel Baden might remember. What about Mr. Baden? He knows nothing. He is very ignorant. He cannot even tell his Bach from his books to Hude. Who is Grimshaw? None of your business. What time is it in Paraguay? Middle of the night. Never have children, Helen. They grow up to hate you. You're such a strong character, that's all. Freddie and Arabella love you all right. It's just that they find it very difficult. They carry on behind my back. So does their mother. They betray me. Is that knobhead still here? Which one? That superannuated policeman with a scrap heap of a calf. I think so. What has he found? Don't ask me. I do ask you, you stupid cow. Why do you think I pay you? Yeah, Pollock. Professor Pollock. Oh. Right, what, you, you've checked that, have you? Oh, great. Thanks a lot, Linda. <laughs> no. No, who told you that? Lewis. Yeah, I'll talk to you about that when I get back. Yeah, cheers. Ta-da. Professor Pollock left for a festival of contemporary music in Bangkok two days ago. Not a suitable place. Did you get anything out of the voice, coach? Nothing we wanted, no, sir.
Freelance name of Neville Grimshaw, do you know? I think so. Isn't there a Grimshaw does pieces on Eastern Europe for the posh rate? Wouldn't know. Sergeant, just give us a sentence. Is she gonna live or die? Yes, sir. What's gonna happen to Miss Probert? Check the gases every quarter of an hour, please. Will she sing again? Don't see why not. They're through there. Mother seems to think she owns her. I'll take her, you take the daughter. Mrs. Baden, Miss Baden. My name is Morse, Chief Inspector Morse. This is Sergeant Burns. Have you found the gunman? Man, madam, what makes you think it's man? Could we have a word? You've no idea where Mari Probert might be. She'll be all right. Of course she'll be all right. Gladys's marriage, you know, was not, not a success, and... I understand the lifestyles were, um, incompatible. No, no. She liked the life. She liked the money. It was the sex. He was no good at sex, not even very interested, and... And many artists have healthy appetites, you know. Well, Gladys is not as beautiful as she once was, perhaps, and, and her taste is for very young men. She chose Mari to come and live with her because she was the youngest and most beautiful girl in the family. To attract young men. Eighteen months ago, Mari fell in love with a, a young man Gladys wanted for herself. Mari refused to pass him on to Gladys. I don't know what right she had to do that. Gladys has paid for everything for her since she was 14, you know. But Is that when half the entourage was sacked? Well, people would take sides. And naturally, Madame didn't like it when people took Mari's. I half supported her myself, as a matter of fact. But Gladys is such a very great artist, and, and we all have to make sacrifices in this life. I think Mari was right to give him up in the end. To, uh, to Madame? No, no, no. What sort of people do you think they are? Mari loved him very much, but she gave him up for her sister's sake. Aren't they repulsive, like blowflies? What always baffles me is, there have to be so many. They all get the same story. I'd like a machine gun. Oh, careful, miss. One of them did get shot last night. Maybe you knew him. Grimshaw, his name was. He's writing an article about your dad. Now, there's someone who likes journalists. Never out of the papers, your dad, is he? They seem to roll on their backs for him. When... When was he killed, this Mr. Grimshaw? Late evening, they reckon. But then, but then he, he can't, he can't... Can't for what, miss?
wanted my own life. That's all the note meant. We've been seeing each other again for the last six months. Of course, Gladys knows nothing about it. But, uh... We're going to have a baby. Oh. Oh, I see. Gladys... She decided not to have babies. Get in the way of her career, see, and you never know what it might do to the voice. She came and took me away when I was 14. I was her baby then. Later. Well. Yes. It just goes on and on, that life, Inspector. Round and round the world. Zurich, Palermo, Sydney. The Wheel of Life, Gentile calls it. It's been more like the Wheel of Death the last few years. But won't you miss the music? The operas? I've seen all the operas. Baby clothes. That's what interests me now. Well, well, you know your sister better than anyone. Can you think who might? No, it's a. I couldn't believe it when I heard it on the news. It. It doesn't make any sense. Things never do till you find out. we found with Grimshaw's things. Careful, Lewis. Reading can damage the eyes. He says Baden wasn't a prisoner in a concentration camp at all. He was a guard. Well, what's that got to do with the shooting of Gladys Probert? Well, it might have something to do with the shooting of Neville Grimshaw, sir. Miss Baden was just telling me. He interviewed her yesterday. And he told her that? About the concentration camp? Well, I don't know, but suppose he told somebody else, and that somebody told Baden who went and shot Grimshaw himself. Is that what you're suggesting? Baden is a link between the two cases. How? Because he was also standing next to Madame Probert when the shot was fired. Well, you weren't so far away yourself. Does that make you part of a criminal? Oh, my God. You're right, Lewis. We've been investigating the wrong attempted murder all along. You've done it, Lewis. You've done it. It was Baden they were aiming at, not Gladys Probus. Only he wasn't standing next to her when the shot was fired, was he? He was walking, turning. A moving target. Precisely. Always harder to hit and shooting down at an angle. Go back to the Bodleian, check all the interviews for anyone with the smallest possible connection with Andrew Baden. Right, sir. Uh, only according to this article, his name isn't Baden, it's Bagdonis. Anders Bagdonis. He's a Lithuanian. Of course he's a bloody Lithuanian. It's in every interview he's ever given. He was in a Lithuanian camp. Immediately without fail. Whatever else is happening. OK, Carl? OK, sir. foreigners, scholars from abroad. Any from Eastern Europe? One or two. Well, let's have a look at them. He wanted to know where my brother was. Why, do you think? Oh, he was trying to dig up some dirt about my father. Everyone always is. But why should Grimshaw imagine that your brother would tell him any dirt, or was supposing that there's any dirt to tell? I don't know. I mean, he... Grimshaw. It was as if he knew something that I didn't, and he needed Freddie to confirm it. 
Any idea what that it might be? No. Why did your brother suddenly up and go, Miss Baden? Oh, he never got on with Dad. And he's not interested in publishing and education and all that. He once told Dad that books were a waste of good trees. He's very green, Fred. But Dad made him go into the business all the same, and after a couple of months, Fred just couldn't take the pressure anymore. What pressure? Dad believes in a creative dialectic. You have an idea, he has an idea, the clash creates a new third idea better than either. Then he pretends that the third idea was his all along. <laughs> but why go to Paraguay of all places? Fred wanted to go somewhere so unlikely, even Dad would never think of it. He was afraid he would follow him. Would he? Oh, yeah, sure. Fred's his only son. That's why he travelled under the name of Henderson. How would Grimshaw have known your brother and father had clashed? It's in the papers. We live in the public eye. It's the way Dad likes it. But what made Grimshaw think that you and Fred are in touch? I don't know. Has your father ever suspected it? Well, I don't see how he could. I mean, I didn't even tell my mother until today. But if you and your brother are so close... Well, I suppose so. Does your father ever talk about his past? The concentration camp? Never mentions it. Except to the press. It goes down very well with them. Did Grimshaw mention it? No. Why should he? Well, he was doing an investigation. He knew all about Eastern Europe. Well, then he knew a lot more than I do. Actually, Lithuania is one of the few places in the world Dad refuses to go to. Fred went there, though, last year, just before he took off for Paraguay. Oh, she's making triumphant progress. Quite out of danger. We could have had the ceremony after all. God knows when you'll be a doctor now. I am a doctor, Lord Hinksy. A medical doctor, yes. Easy to be a medical doctor. Just have to pass a few exams. Which would be a, to get an honorary doctorate. And I've got two of those already, as a matter of fact. I've got 15. 16, if you count Yale. I'm from Yale. Well, there you are, then. American degrees are just two a penny. Uh, Harold! Uh, the only person interested in Baltic studies recently has been Dr. Ignatius. He's been ordering up all sorts of odd things from the stags. Where's he from? University of Vilnius, Lithuania. Where is he now? He complained there was so much disturbance in here, I suggested the History Faculty Library. No, I think it is quite right the university should not be frightened by the action of one madman. Madame Colbert is making excellent progress. Life, or what passes for life in Oxford, must go on. But please don't quote that last bit. If you don't think much to life in Oxford, Mr. Baden, why are you giving it to college? We are in danger in this country of slipping to second-class status because we do not train our young men and women. When a nation neglects the education of its sons and daughters, when it fails to cultivate the flower of its youth, when the institutions of learning are forced to rattle the collection box, 
I wasn't born in this country, but I've made it my own. It's been good to me. I want to see it remain a great nation. That is why I'm doing my bit for Britain. Thank you. Thank you. Is there nowhere in this university where a researcher can work in peace? Dr. Ignatius? Yes. Doing a bit of research myself, sir. Thought you might be able to help me. Just a few questions. Do you mind coming down to the police station? There's no question. None whatever. That's the right little finger. Look, clear as anything on the pistol grip. And there it is in his hand. Right. Right. Thanks. Okay. I've never heard of this woman. I know nothing of opera. I'm tone deaf. Oh, very sad for you, sir. You're an historian, I believe. What is your field exactly? The Grand Duchy of Lithuania in the 15th century. Ah. You will not have heard of the Grand Duchy, of course. People in England are not really interested in what happens beyond the English Channel. Well, Lithuania, once stretched from the Baltic to the Black Sea, Inspector. May not have been as large as the British Empire, perhaps, but it crumbled less fast. Two different guns. That's definite. No, no. It means we're looking for two gunmen instead of just the one. Thanks, though. Can we come to some more rather recent history, Mr. Ignatius? Were you ever in a concentration camp in the war? Yes. Have you ever described your experiences? Yes. To anyone in this country? To a young man called Frederick Henderson, perhaps? Yes. Or a journalist called Neville Grimshaw? You're probably not aware that Neville Grimshaw was found dead this morning. He was shot through the head. Unless you killed him, that is. Had you been seeing him in Oxford? I saw him last night at seven o'clock. He came to the Bodleian Library. What about? He wrote an article. A Sunday newspaper was going to print it. They decided not to. <laughs> oh, you have such stupid laws in this country. So the truth cannot be told. Writs, injunctions, libel, slander. I don't understand these things. If something is true, it must be said. But not in England. No. Especially if the truth happened 50 years ago in Lithuania. His fingerprints on the gun we found, sir, no question about it. But ballistics say Grimshaw was shot with a different one. Thank you, Lewis. Mr. Ignotus, were you ever in a camp with a man called Anders Bagdonis? Yes. The man you met, called Frederick Henderson, is his son. What exactly did you tell him? that his father collaborated with the Nazis. He was a torturer. He tortured Poles, Latvians, Lithuanians, Estonians, Jews, it goes without saying. He tortured me. But he has a camp number tattooed on his arm. Anyone can have a tattoo at any time. I've spent all these years tracking down this man, and now, in the land of so-called free speech, he can call the police to prevent the truth from being told. Is that why you tried to shoot him? I'm sorry I'm a bad shot. I 
I'm sorry I heard the woman. Do you think Anders Bagdonis shot Grimshaw? Oh, no. He never shoots anybody. In the camp, he gave the orders. Other people did the killing. What you say in court, in this country, there is no injunction against that? No injunctions, no. No reads? Then I shall say everything there. Of course, however many degrees you've got, they do die with you. I think I can live with that. If you want your name to go down to posterity, you have to get it in the bidding prayer. Absolutely essential. What? It's something we say at the beginning of each academic year, naming our benefactors, thanking God for them, and so on. Well, not that there is a God, of course, but if there were one, he'd be listening. But you get your name does get recited, and the warden and fellows have to listen. Then we shall certainly have a bidding prayer at Baden College. It doesn't have to be Anglican, does it? Oh, when it comes to benefactors, Andrew, Oxford is completely ecumenical, I assure you. Oh, yes, put in every Tom, Dick and Harry, Jews, Americans, anyone, just so long as they cough up. I am not a Jew, Lord Hinkson. Well, why were you put in a camp, then? Because I was Lithuanian. Oh, I thought you had to be Jewish. <laughs> well, well, learn something every day. May I introduce you to my wife, Andrew? Bethan, my dear, may I introduce you to Andrew Baden? What the hell are you doing here? The Nobad detectives, sir. They're going back to Charlton Woodville in a hurry. But I told the sergeant there is no record of anyone called Grimshaw. I would like to check for myself, please. I'm afraid I really can't let you do that, Inspector. This is a murder investigation. You want me to charge you with obstructing my inquiries? Charles! Hush, please, ladies and gentlemen. As you all know, the Chancellor has, to our great regret, decided the time has at last come to lay down the heavy burden of office. But he is not leaving us without the last taste of his great wisdom. Ladies and gentlemen, the Chancellor of the University of Oxford. There are other Oxfords, at least five in Canada alone. There's one in New Zealand, one in Jamaica. As for America, there's scarcely a state without one. <laughs> Oxford, Alabama, Oxford, Idaho, Mississippi. Mississippi. Maryland, New York. Anders Bagdonis was the most ruthless guard in the camp. He was particularly vicious to his own countrymen. Who told you all this? A reliable witness who says he can produce 50 more. A lot of calls to Paraguay today. About his boy, was it? Oh, God. And there's a Williams. A lot of calls yesterday and today to and from a Williams. Who's he? Security. He's security. Break into people's rooms, does it? Nothing can save Mr. Baden's reputation, Miss Bruscott. I don't think anything can save him, but you might still save yourself. Unless you want to go down as his accessory. Helen! Pick bitch, where are you? Where the hell are you? Where is that pain dead head? Pick face! Nice way to talk to someone. Williams is the man dressed as a clergyman. Why the hell didn't you come when 
when I call you. Knobhead. I'm not a knobhead. Or a dog. And I'm not brain dead. Or a pig. Or a cow. Or a hen. What's the matter? The canary fallen off her perch? Andrew Bailey. I arrest you for the murder of Neville Grimshaw. Yeah, I know the tests take time, but if the gun's the right caliber, can't you... Yeah, but the Chief Inspector doesn't want to wait until tomorrow. How sure are you now? Oh, well, I think 90%'s sure enough for us. Thanks. We'll charge Williams right away. Children, what are they for? To bring their fathers to the grave? You're wrong. Completely wrong. Freddy couldn't bear what Ignatius told him. He was afraid he might tell someone else. His mother or his sister. That's why he went away. He went to find Nazis. To tell him over and over again his father was a criminal. Actually, he's working for an ecological foundation. He is trying to save the planet. Why did you go over to the fascists in the camp? Oh, you're so English. You've led such a sheltered English life. Oxford. A dream town. But there... It was worse than any nightmare you could... Life or death, every minute of the day, my life or yours. Can you understand that knobhead? No. But even here in Oxford, if you had to decide, I kill you or you kill me, which way would you go? I don't know. Then he would die. You'd really kill your own son to preserve your reputation? Kill or be killed. That's what I learned in the camp. That's life. That's real life! Well, 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 what a day. Two shootings, both cleared up. <laughs> and no nonsense from the press. The Lord Lieutenant and the Vice-Chancellor are delighted, you know. Absolutely delighted. Well, they won't have to have this new college now, you see. I wouldn't be surprised if there's not a gong in this for someone, you know. I don't approve of the honours system. Sometimes, boss. Sometimes I don't think you know which side your bread's buttered. And where are you buttering off to this evening? Well, as a matter of fact, I'm dining at Lonsdale as a guest of the Lord Lieutenant. He's an honorary fellow. I don't know how you can eat. Not after Andrew Baden. Well, imagine being one of his victims. Starving. Tortured. Waiting to die. That was all a long time ago, Morse. So you won't let it spoil your appetite? <laughs> you know, the university is always moaning about how it hasn't enough money, and yet there's always enough for a college dinner for 200 guests. People like you to... Now, if they send you to a health farm for a couple of weeks for, for scientific research, I'd understand that, but... I'm sorry. All that butter makes me sick. Well, you are sick. you better take some leave. I wouldn't mind a sympathical. Perhaps your friend, the Lord Lieutenant, could arrange a year's research at Balliol on police and social attitudes. Yeah. I'm not sure about Balliol, but... Uh, enjoy your evening, sir.
hear. You want to get off home? You look done in. I am done in. Art and life, Lewis. Art and life. Oh, yeah. I always preferred art myself. Don't know about life. And when I meet people like Baden, I'm not that sorry. But today, I suppose because I've always thought art was... Because it gave me so much... I've always thought of artists as, as being something different. My dad used to love football, but he didn't like footballers. You have to keep the people who do things apart from what they do. That's what he said. He was right. I was going to go to her concert this evening. There'll be others. They won't be the same now. Why don't you get off home to your wife, Lewis? How is she? Fine. Just fine. In tonight, for once. Give her my regards. Thank you, sir. I will. Good night, Lewis. Good night.